Good evening. My name is Carl Weaver. I'm a wireless market and a mobile device specialist. I work for Ribbits Corporation. We're an ICO, and we provide embedded software security for blockchain design smartphones, um, Ribbits Corp, providing a safe and simpler future. Bingo. Oh. Okay, so basically, in your smartphone, you have a security vault, or basically a storage facility, on all Android, and actually even Apple smartphones. And you don't even know it, and you're not using it. Most software developers here, who've, I, honestly, you've never heard of it. It's called the Trusted Execution Environment, and also ARM's Trust Zone. What you do is you take an app and you port it into ARM Trust Zone, which is a security firewall in the chip. We use we provide developer tools for the trusted execution environment, um, along with ARM's trust, uh, trust zone in the chip. But the real key point here is you need to protect keys. You have so many different keys you're going to learn to have to protect. We move forward. So it's not actually not just keys, it's, and it's also not only authentication. It's IoT, it's blockchain, and it's payment. But it's actually more secure messaging than passwords. Um, so it's, it's not just authentication, but transactions and messages. You need to provide provable controls. Let me move forward. You have to have protection from loss, protection from theft, and also you have to verify the supply chain. That's what we do for you. So let me be very clear here. You have keys that you need to protect. In this case, crypto keys, using a hash. Rules are applied to those keys. The trusted execution environment, which is a security OS only used for ARM Trust Zone, is part of that uh, ecosystem there in the chip, and it's all based on ARM core technology. Obviously, ARM. ARM's the largest IP um, company for chips on the planet, um, but they don't make chips, and neither does Qualcomm, actually. Um, so we are working with Telefonica using the trusted execution and trust zone because we provide the developer tools for you apps developers. But we're also doing something cool. We're providing uh, a split hash in the SIM card as well as in the trusted execution environment. By the way, this is on every single smartphone, and this might have been the first time you've ever heard about it. We're launching our technology in Barcelona, Spain, 2019, with Telefonica, the third largest operator on this planet. Um, we think we're going to create the de facto standard for security on smartphones because why? The operator wants to be involved in the blockchain, uh, and then you apps developers want to be involved in security of these blockchain design smartphones. If you haven't heard, the first blockchain design smartphone was launched in November by HTC, Taiwanese manufacturer working for Google now. Uh, and the second was launched three days ago, two days ago. It's called Surin Labs, Israeli company. So this concept of a blockchain smartphone, what is it? It's all about security. Um, what do we do? We provide our developer network and these are our capabilities. Secure display, key storage, secure pin, encryption decryption, biometric authentication, and what are the applications? Mobile wallet, a crypto wallet for tokens. Um, a crypto wallet for tokens, chat voice, a chat app, bingo. They all need security, they all need, and also storage and cloud authentication. Um, but actually you need rules and permissions when you're going to use, of course, blockchain, uh, wallets and blockchain smartphones. We provide enterprise controllers, smart controllers, user controllers, and cloud controls within the trusted execution environment in the handset, uh, as well as the SIM, but basically using hash. Now, I know there are people are going to ask me about the blockchain when I'm finished, I'm sure about it. Um, so, but it's really important, it's really important that you can protect and retrieve those cryptographic keys if your handset is stolen or lost. We do that. You can uh, provide a split, split or spread application here where everybody can actually have the keys as well. This is what HTC is doing with their handset. Um, these are the Chinese smartphone vendors that have designed a somewhat blockchain designed smartphone. Um, more will come in 2019. That's my job to get it designed in. Um, next generation mobile security, distributed trust, secure messaging, transaction, consumer protection, security to operate crypto and chains. Um, enabling and empowering the global subscriber. This is what we do. I know that was fast, but I'm from the East Coast, New England, Massachusetts, yeah, Red Sox. <laughs> but now also, yeah, Mariners. Oh my God, they just traded their entire team. All right, who has questions? Come on, don't be shy. I promise not to bite you. Go ahead. How does blockchain work? Oh, 
it's a dis it's a it's a it's actually a distributed ledger, and it's immutable, and it's decentralized. So it uses decentralized apps to access it. But you need essentially you need cryptocurrencies. You can buy them with fiat with with U.S. dollars or any other currency. You can buy cryptocurrencies, and then you use cryptocurrencies to do something else on the blockchain. That's a simple explanation. Yes, sir. Oh, tech guy. I'm sure tech guy. Why do I care about a crypto ledger on my phone? Okay. Okay. So tell me more. Explain more because you're not clear enough now. But I like the question. I'm, I'm not sure why you just added security when I've already got AT&T. I'm, I'm sure. Oh, well, actually AT&T had a guy with cryptocurrency that was stolen. He's got a, a huge lawsuit. And, and T-Mobile, the same thing. Here's the reason why. Because the operators don't care when you download a crypto wallet because they're not going to be responsible for when a hacker steals it. Yeah? Any wireless operators here? Yes, please go ahead. So how do you manage, in, in the current iOS, Android world, you have all this device fragmentation, right? Different versions, blah, blah, blah. How do you handle that? Here? It's in all the handsets now. ARM is 97% of the entire world uses ARM IP in the chips. The actually Americans don't make chips besides Intel anymore. We don't make chips, we don't make smartphones. It's all made in China or Taiwan. The largest uh, chip manufacturer on the planet is, H, uh, is uh, TSMC in Taiwan. I don't want to break your idea of America, but we don't make things anymore. It's all made in Asia, it's all made by the Chinese. I am a Greater China and India wireless market mobile device specialist 35 years now. I know what I'm talking about. And for you apps developers, if you want to protect an app, and by the way, you should protect your apps, this is the only way because it's already on the handset as well as the SIM card, normally speaking, the SIM card is also on the handset. There is something called a virtual SIM, right? That's called the TE SIM. I was the first one on the planet to push this technology in 2010 as an employee of Jamalto. Anybody know security? Yes, go ahead. No, I, I just thought you said that anybody knows security. <laughs> Does anybody know who Jamalto is? All your credit cards use Jam uh, Jamalto makes all the credit cards. They make all the SIM cards, most of them. It's the largest uh, digital security company on the planet. I had the fortune to get lots of training. The real key is we don't realize we don't have any security. And the other problem is we don't have any privacy on these smartphones. Fortunately, a company like Apple really does care. No BS, guys. They really do care. Android is not as safe and it's not as secure as Apple. It's a fact. Uh, and that's where our technology works on Android smartphones. Uh, Apple doesn't open this technology, the TE. They have it. They're using it for biometric authentication for a mobile, for their Apple Pay. Here in the headlights. So what is the call to action? Uh, what call to action? Well, Any apps developer, come talk to me because you need the security. Thank you, Leanna. <laughs> oh, I, that was not a paid advertisement. <laughs> I'm so cheap, I never pay for my public speaking. And I'm not a comedian. I'm just from New England, and we're, we're, we're not passive aggressive. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Thank you, Carl.